בעזרת השם נעשה ונצליח, והשם עלינו ברחמיו ירוויח. אוקיי, אז זה סאבג'קט אוף דה שיעור, דה מינינג אוף דה שופר נראש השנה. We all know that we have one important mitzvah in Rosh Hashanah is to listen to the shofar. That's one of the main important mitzvah that we have in Rosh Hashanah. Where is that mitzvah come? So we know that Hazal Telat, it's a mitzvah deoraita. What does it mean mitzvah deoraita? It's a positive command from the Torah that we obligated to blow the shofar and to listen to the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. Where is the source for it? Shh. The source for it comes from Sefer Vayikra in Parashat Emor, in chapter 23, verse 24, the Torah tells us like this. Bahodesh Hashvi'i, Be'ehad Lahodesh, on the seven months, on the first of the months, Iyeh Lachem Shabbaton, should be holy to you, the Shabbos. Zikaron Tru'a Mikra'e Kodesh, that day should be a holy to you, because it's going to be zikaron trua, that means a memory of the sound of the shofar. That's the first source that we see in Sefer Vaikra. The second source comes in Sefer Bamidbar, in Parashat Pinhas. In chapter 29, verse 1, the Torah tells us again, Bahodesh Ashvi'i, on the seven months, Be'ehad Lahodesh, in the first of the, the, first of the seven months, מקרא קודש יהיה לכם, that means it should be a holy day, כל מלאכת עבודה לא תעשו, you're not allowed to do any מלאכה on that day, מלאכה, you're not allowed to do any work, okay, and then the Torah tell us, יום תרועה יהיה לכם, it will be a day of the sound of the shofar, it will be a day that the sound of the shofar, so from here has I learned, that it's a positive command from the Torah to listen to a shofar on Rosh Hashanah. Everyone understand? Let's go on. We know that, you know how many tikkiot we blowing? A hundred. A hundred. Okay, a hundred. <coughs> sorry, uh, Simon, you say? A hundred. A hundred. Well, Huh? That's for Ashkenazim. That's for Ashkenazim. How much the Sephardim? 101. 101. We'll get to it now. So, <coughs> sorry, we'll get, Ezrat Hashem, I'll try to touch everything. But first, let's understand. The Torah, how many sound of shofar we have to hear from the Torah? You know how many sound? Nine. Nine sound of the shofar, and they are tkia, trua, tkia, three times. Understand? So how come that we blowing hundreds? The Ashkenazim blow a hundred. The Sfaradim blow hundred and one. Do you understand? So Hazal have a doubt. The Gemara tell us in Masechet Rosh Hashanah. that Hazal have a doubt, what is Tru'ah? The Torah tell us that we should blow Tru'ah, the sound of the Tru'ah. And Hazal have a doubt, what is the sound of Tru'ah? Is the sound of Tru'ah, it's only nine short sound, or the Tru'ah is what we call Shvarim, that they are long sound. You understand what I'm saying? Or the third one, that it's also short and long. That means shvarim and tru'a together. So because Hazal have a doubt what is it, and they wasn't sure, therefore Hazal decide not to take any more chances because they're not sure. Hazal make a decree that we should do all of them together. Do you understand? And with that, we're coming to a hundred sound of the shofar, You follow, Harry? Yeah. Or you but, lost me? If you why, lost me, stop me. No, but why not uh, nine times? Because Hazal wasn't sure what is Tru'ah. Oh, like, the sound know, of the Tru'ah, what uh, is it? Is it nine short sound? Uh, or is it Shvarim, what we call Shvarim, that it's a long one? Yeah. Okay? Nine long sound of Shvarim. Or that it means that they're both of them together. 
So Hazal make a decree that we're not taking a chance. And Hazal in said, therefore, that, sorry? Yeah. Yes. Then that would make 27 or 30. Wait, wait, we'll get to it, I know. So Hazal said that we should blow tkia, shvarim, tkia, three times. And then we should blow, sorry, 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 tkia, shvarim, trua, tkia, three times. Then tkia, shvarim, tkia, three times. And then again, tkia, trua, tkia, three times. And then we're adding up another 30 sounds to get in total, with all the tkeot to a hundred. You follow? Because we're adding up in the end. Also in Musaf, just remember, we do in Shahrit and then in Musaf. Now, we explain that there is hundred sounds for Ashkenazim, hundred and one for the Sfaradim. So, the Ashkenazim blow hundred sound of the sound of the Shofar, and in the end, they blow No? Help me! Tu'a gdola. Nahon tkia gdola. Sorry, not tu'a. Tkia gdola. The Sfaradim, after Alenu le Shabbat, doing another tkia, and that's called tu'a gdola. Okay? And with that sound, it's come to 101. Like I will friendly Ron mention. 101 tkiot. You follow? So we see from here that there is, we're reaching to a hundred sound of the shofar. Why Dafka 100? Do you understand the question? Why is it so important that in Rosh Hashanah we should listen to a hundred sound of the shofar? Where does that come from? Oh, where does it come from? That's the source that I'm going to bring. The source comes from the Gemara, Masechet Rosh Hashanah, Daf Lamet Gimel Amud Bet. That means 33, page 2. There we'll see. So Hazal tell us in the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, in page 33, folio 2, Hazal say in explaining why do we have to blow a hundred sound. Hazal explain because the mother of Sisra. Everyone know who I'm talking about? Or should I explain? I explain. Sisra was a great general, very strong man, that every war that he had didn't take more than four to five hours. And he managed to conquer his enemies. And we know the story that Sisra got killed by Ya'el. Ya'el killed Sisra. And the mother of Sisra she was a wizard. A matter of fact, a very big wizard. And with the source of the evilness, she realized that the son died. And Hazal say that when she heard that, I'm going to tell you the, the Hebrew word and then I'm going to translate it to English. That em sisra yeveva mea yevavot. That means that she cried a hundred times. You know, when a person, Lo Alenu, cry, he makes special noise. She cries, she makes those hundred noises. And Hazal say that that noises that she make is to criticize against us as Jewish people when we sin. And Hazal say, how do you cancel those hundred evil sound by blowing the shofar? So therefore, Hazal tell us that on Rosh Hashanah, that the Satan shouldn't criticize against us. What it means, criticize? To mention to Akadosh Baruch Hu all our sin, we blowing the shofar and we obligated to hear a hundred sound. You understand? That's one opinion. The other opinion come from the Midrash, and the Midrash say something different. The Midrash say we all know that the Akeda. You remember the Akeda? Akeda yeah, Tzitzhak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Hakavinu been led to the Akeda. When was the Akeda? On Rosh Hashanah. You remember we learned last week. And Hazal said that when Sarah Imenu heard that it's Hakavinu going to the Akeda, she saw in the Holy Spirit that the Satan going to try and disturb and to cause anything 
everything that in his power to stop its hug from going to the Akedah. And Hazal said that Sarai Menu make hundred sound, especially I say sound, that means that she daven to Akadosh Baruch Hu that not allowed the Satan to stop its hug from going to the Akeda. So Hazal say in that merit, we should blow the shofar to remind the Kadosh Baruch Hu to mer the merit of its Haq Avinu going to the Akeda, and that will stand for us as a merit on a day of judgment. You follow, Ivan? So those are the two sources. Any question before I continue? No question. Okay. So we understand why we're blowing the shofar. But we have to understand what is the meaning behind the blowing of the shofar. We understand that it cancels all the decrees. But there is something a little bit higher than that that Hazal tells us. <laughs> Why Dafka shofar? To make the sound. So, is there any merit in that it will bring people together, remind people that what you I'm going to get to it now. I'm going to get to it now. That's what I spoke at the beginning of the show. I said ah. that I'm going to bring different reasons. So, the main reason is, as we explained last week, Aleph Tishrei, fallen Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because we brought that in Aleph Tishrei, Akadosh Baruch Hu created Adam Arishon. Akadosh Baruch Hu finished the creation of the world. By that that he created Adam Arishon, he finished the creation. So what are we doing? We blowing the shofar. Why do we blowing the shofar? To say to Akadosh Baruch Hu, because you're the king of the universe. You're the only one and the only king all over the world, not only on us. That we're crowning a Kadosh Baruch Hu on a day that he finished the creation. By that, that we're blowing the shofar, we're crowning him. Because in the olden days, and even today, when there is something very important, so in olden days, they used to blow the shofar when the king used to come. Today, when the king is come, they used trumpet to all different things to let everyone that something important come. So by that, that we're blowing the shofar, we're crowning a Kadosh Baruch Hu on us and all over the world, that he's the creator. So that's one reason why we blow the shofar. Rabbi Sa'adi Gaon, as I mentioned, there is a doubt where he born. Most of the opinion that he born in Egypt, Rabbi Sa'adi Gaon born 1,135 years ago. And he brings 10 different reasons why we're blowing the shofar in Rosh Hashanah. I'm not going to bring all of his opinion, because there's no time. The time is short. So I'm going to bring a few. And he said like this, that the main reason that we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah is, number one, to remind us Matan Torah, receiving the, the Torah on Har Sinai. That when they receive the Torah on Mount Sinai, they blow the shofar. So to remind us in Rosh Hashanah that we received the Torah. Then he said to remind us the resurrection of the dead. That means that before the Mashiach, after the Mashiach come, they're going to blow the shofar and it's going to be the resurrection of the dead. Then he said to remind us the Atta Mashiach, the coming of the Mashiach. When the Mashiach, just before we come, we're all going to hear a sound of shofar all over the world. And that's going to wake us up to understand the Mashiach come. The other opinion is, is to remind us to daven for the building of Bet Amikdash. Because the sound of shofar used to sound in Bet Amikdash. And the last one that I'm going to bring and that's the most common that all of you most probably hear about it and know about it, that when we hear the sound of shofar, is to shake us, to wake us up, to understand that it's time to do repentance. And how important is it to do repentance? And now we see. So we see from here a few opinions, but it's not the end. There is other opinion that Hazal brings, is to confuse the Satan. Why to confuse the Satan? 
because Hazal tell us that when the Mashiach come, the sound of the shofar gonna sound. And then we say it every morning, Va'alu Moshe'im behar Tzion lishpot et ha'resav. Va'ayta la'adonai ha'mlucha, va'aya Adonai le'melech al kol ha'aretz, ba'yum ha'u yeh Adonai ha'ad u'shmo ha'ad. That's mean on the day that Mashiach come, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take the Yetzer HaRa, and he's gonna shecht it. And when the Satan hear the sound of the shofar, he get confused because he think that that's coming towards his end of his life. It's to confuse him, not to kutrusize on us on Rosh Hashanah. Hazal say something very important, Rabota, and with that I want you to focus now because I want you to understand that if people have a chance, what to do in Rosh Hashanah? Hazal say that before the sound of the shofar, each one of us must do the count of the deeds. What it mean count of the deeds? Must sit and think, what he done all year? What mitzvot he done? What averot he done? And to do repentance and to take on himself that he regret number one that he done the averot, that he not gonna do it, okay? And to do repentance. And Hazal says something very important, that the person that do that before the tki'at shofar, that's the most important. And I'm going to bring you a source now for remedy for a person that do that. The Rashash. Rashash. The Rashash born 297 years ago in Yemen. He was the giant of the Kabbalah after Ari Kadosh. And there is a doubt, they're not sure where he born. Is he born in Tzana, in the city of Tzana, or in Sharab? This is two cities in Yemen. The bottom line is, the Rashash wrote, and he is one of the highest spiritual in the Kabbalah, Rabbi, that he came after the Ari Kadosh, and he said like this, that the person that do repentance before the sound of the shofar, listen to that, Rabotai, a person that do repentance before the sound of the shofar, even if he have a decree on him, a bad decree, he say, Nigzar alav din mavet, that means that the judgment on him, lo aleinu, is a punishment of dead, if he do a repentance before the sound of the shofar, they're going to change the decree. Now we understand what the shofar do. Now you're going to ask me a simple question. What is repentance? Nahon? How do we do repentance? So the Rambam explained like this. Number one, he must regret on all the sin that he done. Number two, he'll take on himself, okay, from now on, not to do any more Averot. Number three, if that Avera came into him and he didn't done it, that considered repentance. And not only that, Hazal say, if a person say, Hatati, Aviti, Pashati, those three words, Akadosh Baruch Hu, Hatati, Aviti, Pashati, I regret what I've done. I take on myself from now on to do only good deeds and mitzvot. HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgive him. Not only that, Rabotai, listen to that now. And that's the cherry on the top. When a person do tshuva me'ahava, you know what is a tshuva me'ahava? When a person do repentance, from his love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he love HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not because he afraid from the punishment or anything, HaKadosh Baruch Hu turn all of those averot that he done, he turn them to mitzvot. Do you understand what I'm saying? A person that do tshuva me'ahava, Rabotai, and he regret about the averot that he done, HaKadosh Baruch Hu turned those averot to a mitzvot. Do we understand what we're saying? No, we don't. I'll give you a 
some idea for us, a knowledge to understand. A person owns the bank a million rand, and he can't pay it. The bank manager calls him, and he says, I'll do with you a deed. I'll do with you a deal. I'm going to freeze your million rand like you don't owe me. I'm going to give you a new loan. And if you pay that loan, I'm going to freeze completely the minus that you have. But, but, if you pay me well every month, or you pay me before the end of the month, until you finish that loan, I'll turn that million rain that you owe me, the, the minus, I'll turn it to credit. You understand what I'm saying? That's Basar Vadam. That's a human being. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tell us, if you do tshuva me'ahava, you do repentance from ava, you regret about what you've done. Not because you're afraid. I'll turn all your averot to a credit, to mitzvot. <coughs> Who doesn't want that? It's a very simple method of, of creating more mitzvot in your, in your life. Just do, do a virus. Has the shalom. Has the shalom. Do a virus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, the tshuva me'ahava. Then, so what you say, what Simon tried to say, do averot all your life. Yes. And then when they wake up, do tshuva me'ava. Rabotai, when a person gets used to do averot, it's in his nature to do averot. He can't change. Okay. You understand? Yes. Many people that gone off the rail, instead of landing in Cape Town, you know where they land. When you go off the rail, you can't come back. It's very difficult. You need a lot of si'at dishmaya, si'ata de dishmaya. That means a lot of help from up heaven, from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So to do repentance, you can't play with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know exactly what the person has in his heart. So what we should do, we should regret now about what we've done, we human beings. But we should do it me'ahava. That's not because we fear that Has V'Shalom, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, will do a certain act. No. We should do it because we love you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We regret what we've done. We was naughty. I regret it. From now on, I'm taking on myself to improve my deeds and not to do those averot. That will turn all of those averot to a credit. To mitzvot. And then, if we do that, and we do the counting, and we understand the sound of the shofar, that we're crowning a Kadosh Baruch Hu, because that's the highlight of Rosh Hashanah, the sound of the shofar, and we do repentance, shuvah me'ava, then a Kadosh Baruch Hu, Be'ezrat Hashem, will write all of us, our family, and all the Jewish people all over the world, lehaim tovim, u shalom. And then, Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll see Mashiach Tzitkenu Bimera Be'amenu Amen Keni Ratzon.